Is software development an art or a science? No, it's not either one. And honestly, it's not exactly engineering. It's really kind of something else. And that's what I want to talk about today on Product Driven. To survive and thrive, you must adopt a product driven mindset. So I first started doing software development around the year 2000. I went to college at DeVry who did not offer computer science, but when I was younger, computer science is what people would study in school. These days, it's usually software engineering. But historically, if you think back, it used to be more of a science. If we're thinking about like, you know, tubes and building computers and the hardware and all that part of it is very much a science. But I would argue what software developers do today is not really quite as scientific. And when you think about what science is, it's usually making a hypothesis, doing a lot of experiments and figuring out what works, which that sounds a lot like startups, but doesn't sound like writing code. If you're just making a lot of guesses when you write your code and hoping that it works, you're probably really terrible at your job, right? Like, that's not what we do, okay? It leans more towards the engineering side, which we'll talk more about later. But we do have to understand the science behind com how computers work to do our jobs. And I think you could make the argument that if you're building a large language model or really advanced sort of computer science related things, I would say it is more of a science. But for most software developers, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think I would call it science. I think I would call it more engineering. And part of the reason why is there is no correct answer to what we do. Every single thing that we do with software, there is no correct answer that is right or wrong. Where most things that are scientific in the world, there's usually one final understanding about the end result about how something works, right? In computer science, that's not really the case, okay? So if it's not a science, is it more like an art? Well, when you think about art, you think about something that's highly, highly creative. And honestly, building software can be highly, highly creative, especially something like video games. And those are absolutely very creative. Um, software can have a lot of different styles and there are multiple ways to solve every problem, as I mentioned before, which makes it sound kind of like an art, but it's not. It's really not an art, let's be honest, because most software outside of video games is really very much about the functionality and the utility of it. Think about a salesperson who's using CRM software to enter data and some process happens, a lot of line of business applications. Most of the software we use in this world is very much about the utility. It's not really about the art except when it comes to video games and some other you know, random scenarios. And let's be honest, most of us are using material design, tailwind, bootstrap, like how much art is there really into this when you're reusing these same component libraries that everybody else uses? Software development tends to be very, very objective, where art is more subjective. There's really no right answer. When we're building software, it's usually more objective, and we're usually following a lot of requirements and rules. Like somebody gives us the requirements of what to build, and we are still working within that sandbox. We can't just color outside the lines and do whatever we want. Now, we can be very creative, and we can bring ideas and whatever, but we still have to kind of fit in that box of whatever the original utility was that somebody wanted us to build. Now, I mean, here's the simplest way to prove that it's not an art. How many of you have the decision making to change the button color in your software? Probably not. There are standards at your company of what the colors the buttons have to be. Like, we just don't have a lot of creativity in these things. Now, we have some creativity in the code and like how we do some things, but again, it's not quite an art. I wouldn't really call it an art. The other reason I would say it's not an art is software development is very team oriented. This is not an individual task. When you think about art, you think about an individual doing a painting, writing music, doing a lot of different kinds of art. Software development is very team oriented where everybody has to kind of do things the same way and work together. Yeah, there's freedom of kind of some, you know, how things are done, but at the end of the day, it's a team and we're all sort of trying to do things in a similar way. 
that kind of kills the creativity from a true art perspective. So if software development is not a science and it's not an art, what is it? Well, think about buying kitchen cabinets for your house. You bring somebody in, you explain what you want, what the utility needs to be, how big they need to be, how tall, all the different things. You're defining the requirements. And then some craftsmen go back, they build whatever it is that needs to be done. They do have some freedom in how they actually architect those cabinets, maybe the type of materials they use. Are they using dovetail drawers? Like, you know, they can put in little, the little details that are maybe, vis some are visible and some are hidden that go into the craftsmanship. I think software engineering is very much that way. It's really a craft, okay? It's a balance of best practices, you know, all the different frameworks we use these days, all the different packages, and making the best judgment of which of those to use to solve the problem for the customer. You know, and ultimately what we do is a lot of practical problem solving. People come to us with a problem and they're like, I need you to solve it. And that's kind of the reason it's not an art is we're always servicing somebody else. Like the end result of what we do is not our code. The end result of what we do is the product, the outcome that we deliver to somebody else, okay? Now again, I understand we have some freedom in how we build stuff and software developers will make the argument of like, well, I wrote the code this way and you know, I'm highly creative and there's art to it, but again, I don't really think so. I think it's really more of a craft, yeah. Now, really smart developers, you know, build cool architecture and I'm not trying to, you know, not value any of that, but I wouldn't call it an art, okay? So again, I think it's really more about the craftsmanship. And you know, even you talk about craftsmanship of carpentry, you know, how you architect and engineer kitchen cabinets to be strong and all these kinds of thing, things are very similar to architecting software that would be very high quality and not have a lot of errors and not break. Like it's the same sort of thing, it's craftsmanship, okay? We really want to champion the craftsmanship of what we do because it's not really quite an art or a science, okay? And ultimately, we're building something for somebody else. I think that's the key thing to remember here. All right, so is it engineering? Well, if you think about engineering in general, it's usually engineering of physical things or construction, like building a house or cabinets or something like that, building an engine. You know, we're talking about fluid dynamics or, or all these different kinds of things, even electronics, engineering of electronics themselves. But most of those kinds of engineering you validate the designs before you build them. You, you probably use actually a lot of software to, to build those designs. But engineering, those types of engineering usually produce a consistent result. Like if I told you to go build an engine to these specs, like you could build it in the perfect way and have the same desired outcome every time. Where when it comes to software, there really is no right way to do anything. Literally, never. You could ask 10 different developers to go build the exact same thing, and they will build it 10 different ways with different programming languages and all of these things. Where traditional engineering usually is very defined in how it is done. So why do we call it engineering? Well, I think that's because it's not really software engineering, it's product engineering, right? Really our job, and this is my whole career for 25 years, I started out, I had talked to the customer, figure out what they wanna do, it was my job to figure out how to engineer the solution, right? Almost like the guy building the cabinets. It's like, okay, do I need this kind of cabinet? 16 inch width, 18 inch width, all the different things. How am I gonna pick out what I need to solve the issue for the customer, right? How am I gonna engineer the solution to this? So it's not really the exact same as traditional engineering, but that's what we call it because it's the most analogous sort of similar thing. Um, software development is very much like the solution design work. Again, people give us requirements and we have to figure out how are we gonna solve this? And sometimes it can be very complicated and I would say sometimes it could be a little bit of a science as I mentioned earlier, if you were trying to build a LLM or doing like really advanced, advanced, true computer science, okay? But at the end of the day, most of what we do is based on creating specifications and plans which engineering also does, and I think that's one of the reasons that we refer to it as engineering. And engineering also tends to take complex problems and turn them into manageable components or smaller problems that can be solved, again, which we do a lot of in software engineering. So again, I, I love software development, 
And when I started my career, it was called software development. It wasn't called software engineering 25 years ago. That's a new term that really took off over the last, you know, 10 to 20 years. And a lot of college degrees now are called software engineering, where when I was doing it, it was computer science. So it's interesting to see how it has changed. And even the college part of it has went away from the science part of it to more of the engineering terminology. I think ultimately the reason we call it engineering is trying to go from maybe the old days of software development where it was rapid development and we're throwing stuff together and iterating and we're not spending as much time maybe engineering things the right way. Thinking about, you know, how do I build testing and scale and performance and error handling and all these different kinds of things that you would build, you would use in a large scale system to engineer it the right way. So ultimately, I think that's the reason we use all that terminology, which makes sense. But you know, there's a part of me that um, will always be a software developer at heart. And as a startup guy, I try to avoid that engineering if I don't need it as well. I'm trying to move fast, as fast as possible. And some of the developers I hire that have worked at these large companies, they want to overcomplicate and over-engineer everything, which is a problem in an early stage startup where you're trying to move and go quickly. Ultimately, it's the balance of these things. So is it an art or a science? I don't think so. I think it's a craft. What do you think? Before we wrap up today's episode, we have a special resource for you if you're looking to elevate your development team to have more of a product driven mindset. I have a fantastic free ebook about turning your code first team into a product first team. Please go to fullscaleteam.com slash product first teams to download this free ebook. There's also a link in the show notes. Thanks for listening to Product Driven, and we'll see you in the next episode.